everybody, and welcome to our latest Redman Reviews. I'm Chris Garlock with the American Go E-Journal, and joined once again by Michael Redman, Nine Dime Hi. Professional. Hey, Michael. Hi. All right, so we've just uh, we've just done three of the AlphaGo AlphaGo games, so we thought we'd uh, take a look at one of your recent games. Mm -hmm. Do you want to tell us a little yeah. bit about um, which, uh, which tournament, who you're playing, and a little bit about okay. the game? Yeah, this is the Oza tournament, and it's uh, um, the final game of the B section. Um, and so, yeah, I haven't been playing so many games recently. Uh, one of the reasons is that I, I uh, did bad a few months ago, and so I, I, was, uh, I lost some of the tournaments. And also there's the fact that in this game in particular, I was just waiting for, I was seated in the final of the B section, so I was waiting for people to catch up with me. Mm. Um, and that's that happened in a few tournaments. Like it's, it's um, there's some other tournaments that are coming up in which I was waiting for people to to win their way up to me. Mm -hmm. And so um, so like I was doing really well before then, and then a few months ago I did badly and ended up with all these tournaments where I was waiting for people, um, mm. but I didn't have anything active at the time. So that's that's the reason I uh, I'm playing for the first time in a couple of months, I guess. Um, my opponent is Matsumoto Takeshi. Um, he's a seven don. Actually, he's one of Chojikun's students. So um, he has a very um, famous teacher. Um, and Chojikun, of course, only takes very gifted children as his students. So he, he was um, uh, he was supposed to be very gifted, and he is one of the strong. I think he's won. He won the uh, the Young Kings tournament, the Shinjin mm -hmm. um, once, and he's um, one of the coming up players. And he actually he lives in Chiba, so he, he lives fairly close to me, um, relatively speaking. And you've played him before? Uh, about three or four games, I think. This might be the uh, fourth game. Um, mm -hmm. He's a very strong fighting player. Um, and so his games usually revolve about big fights. And so that, that's sort of what I expected here. It was interesting in this game, I, sort of, I saw him playing the master style. Um, and that's become really the master's series really changed the way professionals play mm -hmm. and we'll, we'll see that showing like everyone started playing these uh shoulder hits and stuff and these big shimaris so we can see uh uh, uh already playing the big shimari um and actually AlphaGo still does that and we'll be seeing this shimari and maybe some of the um the self-played games too mm -hmm. uh, but not as much i don't think it does it as much as it did in the master series. In the master series, we're seeing uh, like it would, um, it plays the, a, a smaller shimari sometimes in the master series. So it's changed a little bit. Um, and I, I, I'm playing a kind of an orthodox game here, taking territory. Um, and we can see now uh, Matsumoto plays this move. This is very typical of the master series. It's a it's yeah. a master series style. Um, later in the in the AlphaGo self played games, I'll probably be talking about this point. This is a point where AlphaGo does not always play the jump, um, and this is really interesting because Gosegan didn't like to play the jump here. He he mm. didn't like this move, and he preferred um, playing away usually, or he would extend on the fifth line sometimes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He didn't really like us to play the jump. He said it was it wasn't strong enough. Um, and then Master started playing these shapes, and everyone was playing this. Uh, looking at the AlphaGo series, the 50 game series in which AlphaGo is playing itself, um, it's looking a lot more like Gosegen. And we'll be seeing that. I, I think we'll be seeing that in game four or five, maybe, of the mm -hmm. series, um, which I'm already digging into right now. But um, we'll be seeing that. Uh, um, AlphaGo is playing different moves. It plays locally, it often plays the extension on the fifth line. Mm -hmm. And also it, it plays away sometimes. Um, and I played away too. Um, and Black invades, uh, again, plays a, a shoulder hit. And I don't really want to uh, answer this um, locally because I have a low position on, on the lower side. So like if I answer here, Black's probably just going to force me into an over-concentrated shape here. Like this kind of thing is something that, as white, I don't really want to happen. Uh, this would be good for black. Mm -hmm. And so at this point, 
I take the opportunity to, to make a higher position here. Um, and you can see that by doing this, I am trying to uh, limit the value of all these moves, all these high moves that Black has played, like mm -hmm. that uh, shoulder hit on, in the upper left and stuff. Um, if, I, if I can get an, a position in the center here, all of that will sort of uh, dissolve into wasted moves. So that's, right. that's the idea behind this move. Black plays once here, and I, I play a pro. Um, and, you know, like if Black answers here, uh, it's going to be a good exchange for me because uh, this honey underneath is a move that White sort of wants to play anyway. And so when I play something like this, the exchange on the right there is um, is a good exchange for me. So I, I think that um, it's good for me to have this exchange in. And so Black answers more strongly. Uh, didn't play that way, but played this way. Mm. And um, so I'm trying to make I'm, I'm trying to uh, make Sabaki here on the right side, uh, trying to um, maybe sacrifice a few stones. Black plays the strongest move here. And there's some there's some bad Aussie in the corner, um, but for the time being, I'm trying to make a position in the center, uh, just to reduce Black's potential there. So I, I'm, I'm thinking this is working fairly well. Black is getting a lot of territory in the corner, like Black has more than 20 points already. Um, but if we look at the entire board, that's the, the that's the one and only Black territory at this point. Like white, Black has a potential territory in the upper right, but um, if I can get a strong position in, in the center, then all of the, the rest of Black stones are pretty much wasted. Mm -hmm. They're not really working optimally. And so my idea is just to, uh, it's a kind of a gambit of giving back the lower right corner a large territory there. Um, but um, I, I do have uh, territories in the upper left and uh, lower left, uh, potential territory in the lower left. So I, I, I'm feeling at this point that the territorial balance is still, is still fairly well balanced, even though I'm giving back a big territory. It's the, uh, it's the godfather gambit. You made him an offer he couldn't refuse. Yeah. <laughs> and so at this point, now, if this, all these white stones on the outside turn into thickness, it's going to be bad for black. Right. And so it's natural that um, this is a very, um, when I say that Matsumoto is a strong fighter, um, it's basically this kind of move that I'm talking about because he, he's very good at finding these weaknesses in shape. It's sharp. And hitting sharp at them, yes. So the idea behind this move is uh, obviously white can connect everything with this kind of move, uh, but black can... Um, be threatening the connection underneath and something like this will happen. Uh, White's move at A, it's a very, it's a kind of a wasted, it's an inefficient yeah. stone. It's, it's connected, but it's it's not really that good. Yeah. And the fact that Black has forced me to play two moves at A and B, it gives Black um, some momentum to get out to the center. And we can see that White's, White's uh, stones on the outside there are still not quite settled. So this would be okay for black. And so I, um, instead of uh, playing the honey here, I, uh, I played once here and then cut. So the idea behind this move is to, um, if black hmm. takes it, this is the natural move for black. If black takes it, white can play the honey here. And now actually white has very good shape because nice. um, the extension here itself is good shape in the center. And uh, if, even if black tries to cut here, um, cutting there on the fourth line is going to be bad shape for black. It's, it, black's two stones, when black cuts, is, are going to be very weak. And white's going to have good shape on the outside. So in this case, um, black's attachment, uh, let, let's mark that. This attachment here has become a failure. It has not succeeded. Yeah, that's actually a really nice sequence for white. Mm -hmm. So I cut here. And uh, so basically, black can just, this is not acceptable for black. Taking the one stone is not acceptable, and black plays on the outside. And so we got into this trade here. Um, it was really interesting, but uh, actually, whites gained a lot of territory here. Uh, like, that was uh, something like 15 points of black territory on the side, and it's turned into a white territory. So it's whites gained uh, more than 20 points on the side mm. here. Cash. And if white does have a living shape, so white doesn't have to worry about those stones anymore. And in turn, black is starting to attack in the center. 
So it all depends on how black can make this attack in the center work. Um, black is, um, after playing this exchange, I think black is planning to come up, come from above. And white does have a bit of a heavy shape here. Uh, so against this move, I jumped away. And uh, black is continuing to try to attack here, giving me heavy shape. And now I attached here. Uh, now this is a kind of a tesuji. Um, I'll mark this point here. Uh, this, this triangle here is a point where white would like to be able to play. But for the time being, it's not going to work. Why don't we just put a, a variation in? Like if white pulls yeah. back here. If black, white pulls back here, uh, black can play this way and capture, capture the white stones. So going back to this point. Oh dear, right. Uh, actually, that was uh, what Black was doing. Um, it was what Black was doing with this move here. Uh, pushing through here, Black was uh, making this capture possible. Mm -hmm. And so that was mm -hmm. part of the meaning of Black pushing through there to make this variation work for Black. And so I can't do it directly. So instead I, I attached Oh, uh, I attach here, um, trying to make a forcing move to make the triangle move work. And black pushes through and pushes through. And 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 so now uh, at this point, actually, I think black should capture one stone and I would be able to connect here and black would play on the outside. Hmm. And in this game, um, because of the fact that I gained a lot of territory in the trade on the lower side, White is going to have a lead in territory anyway. White has a lead in territory. Um, black has only about 10 points in the lower right corner and doesn't have any other territories. Like the, the upper right corner is not quite territory yet. So white so, has a lead in territory. Yeah. Well, no, you know I'm rooting for you, but gosh, don't those white stones look kind of heavy in the middle there? That's the point. In this, in this variation, black has a big attack going on in yeah. the center and can probably use that to get um, a, a chunk of territory in the upper right area. Okay. So, okay. so black has the initiative in this variation. And that's the comparison with the actual game because black went for the cash. Um, and in return, I got to pull out here. So at this point, actually, it's uh, white gets to take the initiative. Yeah. So I place these forcing moves in the corner and jump out in the center. And we have this weak black group in the, on the lower side. And so the black has lost the opportunity to attack me in the center um, by taking the right side. And this so is, this, this is like doubly good because you've got the attack on the corner and uh, potentially on those stones in the center, right? Well, yeah, in the, the corner position is, is um, it's black's territory for the time being. Mm -hmm. um, if we look at territory, if we say the whole right side is black's territory, black has a lot of territory now. And so the territorial balance is sort of uh, drifted to be good for black now. It's a, it's a bit better for black than white. Okay. Um, but actually, there's a lot of bad odds on the right side. Um, and actually, to, to give you a conclusion here, just to um, tell you what's going to happen, the fact that I failed to make full value out of that bad odds on the right side was uh, uh, the reason I lost the game, actually. Okay. If I had made proper use of this Aji that I have on the, on the right side, um, maybe I would have won the game. And this involved, this gets a bit complicated when I talk, start talking about the right side because it, the situation in the, in the corner, um, for the time being, Black's winning the semi, but depending on what happens on the right side, that can change. So I'll, I'll be getting into a lot of variations there later. When I start so talking about when it. you say complicated, we're talking like human complicated. We're talking alpha go alpha go level complicated. Um, human level, yeah. It's just <laughs> the one. It's not just the one fight on the right side. It's not like there's going to be uh, four or five <laughs> groups that are going to. Oh, we're fine. We're fine then. It's just one group we're going to be talking about. Okay. All right. Yeah. And so black is trying to um, make shape on the right side. At this point. Um, as uh, black does have a big potential territory on the right side, black's strategy is to, it, black is trying to save the lower side groups, but still black has the option of 
um, sacrificing them on a small scale. If black can get maybe something on the left side. So that okay. black, that is what black is going to try to do now. Like just running away would be very heavy and it would probably end with a good result for white. Uh, but this attachment here was very well timed. This was a good, a good move. It, it, was, it was impressive actually for me. Um, in which black is sort of offering a trade of the lower left corner for the, the black stones on the, on the right side, on the lower side that is. Um, and so I extend here, trying, trying to reduce the effect that this has on the center. But at this point, I'm faced with a choice. Like if I extend here, black can live in the corner. This is a very big point, the 3-3 point here. And white can add a stone to the center. And I think these, these five marked stones here, the five black stones are probably going to die. Right. But we see something <laughs> close, several points in the corner for black. And white still has a good deal of bad Aji there. Um, and at the very least, black can play forcing moves like A. I've marked there A. Black can play some forcing moves from the center. And black will have Sente uh, to play a move on the upper side. And so just taking those five stones is not necessarily good enough. And I didn't like this variation, like this. Um, it's probably something in the vicinity of 40, 45 points, white territory there. Um, and, but then white has the territory in the upper left. But if black can add a stone to the upper right, then black's going to have a lot of territory there too. Like it, it could be more than 50 points. So um, it could be a fairly close game, but I just didn't like the idea of all this bad Aji I have in, on, the, on the side here. So I didn't choose this way. But instead I took the corner. And I think I, I, think I still agree with this judgment. I think I made the right choice here. Uh, black, black plays the honey. Um, and again, black is just sacrificing the two stones on the side to get a good shape in the center. Now, at this point, uh, black is, has some, still has some forcing moves against the lower left corner. And so this black group has become fairly strong. And the value of uh, saving these stones, as we see now, is that white's group in the center is still not settled. So black is right. still, still keeping the possibility of attacking here. Um, from White's point of view, White's got more than 20 points in the lower left corner. And so as far as territory is concerned, uh, White seems to have a small uh, lead in territory at this point. And also I have the initiative, so I have some potential to be moving to the upper right area first, okay. which is, that's my game plan. So I play the jump here once. Um, it still looks like maybe White can try something, like moves like this uh, are something that string to mind, but mm -hmm. the fact that in the center white's position is not really well connected is bad because black can peep here and play the attachment. Um, if we get into this kind of fight, uh, white's group in the center is really in danger. Yeah. And I, I think white's gonna lose this fight. White, um, at this point, uh, white has a lot of stuff to deal with and black has an advantage in the semi. Um, so I don't like this for white. This is, this is a bad variation for white. Otherwise, uh, white can try stuff like this would be a, a kind of a normal move. Mm. Um, making shape in the center and saying black has to connect on the side. Um, the lower side group still is not completely connected. Um, but uh, black can answer here. And this brings back the Aji in the corner, like white, white has to answer this move and black can still cut here. This is a Tesuji. And depending on how white answers it, if white answers on the third line, like if white answers underneath, black gets an extra forcing move. But if white answers here, then black has to cover on the side. Um, and in this case, black is more black has an eye there in the center and a pretty strong shape on the whole. And like the the cut at A has forced white to put an extra stone in there. So this is nice shape for black. I didn't really like this variation. So that's uh, the reason why I'm playing this move to forestall that little squeeze there in mm. the corner. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And black has to play here. And here I'm um, fixing up my connection in the center and still threatening black. At this point, black pushes through and I attack first. Um, black can connect there. Black plays this squeeze here to connect underneath. Uh, to, and then plays the cut here. Black plays this squeeze. But of course, uh, while all of this is happening, I have managed to fix up my corner shape Actually, this this corner is bigger than it was before. Although black is squeezed, 
um, the, the number of points actually has increased for white. And black connects up here. We can see that black is, doesn't have so much eye shape in this variation. Black, black has one potential eye there. Um, and so black has to add this. And now I have a fairly strong, for the time being, my center group is OK. So this is my opportunity to switch to the right side. And so this is a key point in the game. I, I have Sente to play on the right side. Um, You're talking about the upper right-hand corner. Or the, yeah, well, uh, that's what I did. What I did was I played in the upper right corner. Um, but that's, that's uh, I was fair. also looking at the right side. The right side is, is really important because there's a lot of bad Aji for black. And um, so playing in the right corner, and I played very simply because I, I was having this feeling that I was, in, uh, I was leading the game. I was ahead. And maybe the th feeling was right, actually. Um, I think um, looking at the game now, I think that um, it's good for white. But the reason that it's good for white is because I have all this potential on the right side. Um, and it, I was looking at it, um, but I wasn't looking at it deeply enough, maybe. And so I had this vague feeling that I was going to win the game. Um, but to make that valid, I had to uh, take advantage of the bad Aji that black has on the right side. So there was a, um, a subtle uh, misinterpretation of my feeling that I was ahead um, and that it was really, I, I had to do something to make it happen on the right side here. Mm -hmm. uh, now, such, such as? Such as, well, this is the move that I was looking at. And um, this move, uh, it's going to get a bit complicated, but um, there's some wishful thinking in this move. And um, the good thing is that I realized that, and I discarded this variation. So that, that was correct. Um, but then I didn't go one step further and just decide, think of this move, which turns out to be better. So that's a kind of a preview of what I'm going to be talking about. And so to start with this move, um, there's three ways locally that black can answer it. Black has to do something locally. There's three ways black can answer it. Black can play here to win the semi in the corner. Uh, black can play here, or black can play here. Why don't we do this one first? Mm. When black plays here, uh, it, the semi in the corner is very clear cut because white has only two moves left. Um, but white has all sorts of forcing moves from the side. Like, uh, uh, let's just mark. Um, oh, I'll, I'll get into that later. I'm going to start with this move, for instance. Um, when black plays here, white can pull back here. Now, this is one of the forcing moves that I can use against the right side, because if black uh, if black plays on the outside here, white has this call. So this is going to be a, a big call that black cannot afford to lose on the right side. So I could use the co threat to kill black on the lower side. So this would be a disaster for black. Mm -hmm. Uh, so this is the this is the whole meaning be behind uh, white's white's hana here. The the hana here is setting up that ko. Okay. All right. Um, so let's just go through some variations here. If black plays here, white gets the ko. If black plays to um, get rid of the ko, um, I was feeling that I could probably do fairly well in this fight. Um, this is maybe one way I could have played. This would be uh, lead to a big fight. Um, just heading into the upper side. And if I can succeed with living with this group, then obviously the whole right side territory for black is going to disappear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is how I plan to play, how I wanted to play. Um, maybe black's going to play something like this, a more solid move. But actually, this is still forcing because of ABC. Well, I can still make the call there. So black has to go back to the corner. And something like this might happen, in which case, um, compared to playing in the upper right corner uh, with my first move, white has gotten a lot of extra um, in momentum here. White's going to get a big territory in the corner. So this is good for white too. Um, otherwise, maybe black's going to just pull back. In this case, um, I have this forcing move. Again, there's the co there on the, on the side. 
and I can push through and cut. Um, something like this could happen. And you can see there's a lot of algae there. Um, I, I made this, I just I get, got carried away here, just uh, a variation, a lot of moves. There's all this stuff in the corner that can happen. Another co. Um, it's just a lot of trouble for Black. Like um, Black probably just going a few moves back. When White plays here, Black probably has to protect the corner. And uh, in this variation, White has reduced the right side uh, to a great deal. Like it's um, it's maybe about 40 points, but White has a good position on the upper side. And all of those black stones in the center are pretty weak now. So this would be a win for white. That's a really nice use of Aje. Yeah, this would be very successful. Um, but this yeah, is, so, not, this is not what happened now. Yeah. So um, that's one of the meetings. If black plays this way, that's what I was thinking of doing. So if we let's take a look at this move. With this move, white has the forcing move at A um, and the forcing move at B. So white has two forcing moves. So um, white can continue like white did in the corner in the actual game, and then play these uh, these forcing moves from the center. And black has to be careful again because if black plays from the outside, white always has this forcing move, and uh, this will make a one-step co. But a one-step co is bad for black here. It's it's it, it's a, an area where black was counting on having territory. Um, so even a one-step code that is favoring black is going to be good for white because uh, white can afford to lose this code. Mm -hmm. But it's if black loses the code, the whole area becomes white right. territory. Right. And so this is just something black cannot afford to do. And so black has to play from inside here. Um, we can see white is again is getting a lot of potential, and white still has this move. I'm, I'm just put the, putting these moves in to show what happens in the corner here. Um, this kind of thing happens. In which case, black wins the semi by one move, but white has actually gotten to force from both sides. Like white's forced from the upper side, and also forced from the lower right corner. And um, all the momentum, although black has saved the whole territory here, it's taken black a lot of moves. Like white has gotten a very good position on right. the upper side, and some extra points in the corner, in the lower right corner. And it was and all black. I mean, it's all black territory anyway. Yeah, well, yeah, it looked like back there during anyway. And so that's another variation that's good for good for white. And so to come back to this move, there's the third variation, which is this one, which I a very simple move, isn't it? And this is the final variation that doesn't work for white, because originally I was thinking that this would change what happens in the corner. It it gives me a lot of potential in the corner with this move. And when white plays this cut, the first move that springs to mind is for black to play here, to capture the stone. Yeah, right? I've been looking at that for a while, trying to figure, you know, trying to work out what happens. When black plays here, black loses, um, there's two points here, like there's this cut and there's the honey in the corner. White needs to play both of them. So when black, black plays that move, white's gonna, oh, sorry, this move. When black plays this move, white's gonna get both of the key points. White mm -hmm. gets to play the cut, which is a squeeze, also gets to play the honey in the corner, which gives white a uh, shape that is hard for black to fill the liberties. And so this uh, continues this way. Black can make a co out of it. Um, but you can see that black is sort of short of liberties. And this is a one step co. Like it's after fighting the co on the right side, white can fight, fight the co at R, R1, the, the co on the first line here. Um, so it's a, two, it's a one step approach move co. Um, but wow. again, wow, wow, when wow. white wins that, that, that was a, a corner that black was counting on his territory. So it's a flower brewing quote for white. It's good for white. Um, but it turns out that uh, black, uh, at this point, black has this move, which um, I realized uh, midstream. Now, this is a good move because if white, um, if white connects, this is giving the black group um, the black six stones, seven stones there in the center, it's giving them three liberties. So if white just connects, uh, black can win the semi with this. Oh, move. right. I see. Okay. It's just also, uh, and so uh, if, black, if white um, plays here then, now black can play this move. And the difference here is now that black is going to 
uh, in the other variation, black had a false eye. This variation, black had a false eye. In this variation, black's making a real eye. And that means that uh, when white plays, uh, when white plays this way, it's going to be an eye against no eye, and it's going to be a much more difficult uh, semi for white to win. Like if white just um, plays here, this is going to be a double call. Like there's the call on the right side, and there's the call in the corner. Black mm -hmm. can take either of those calls and still has two liberties on the outside. So that's no good. Uh, white has to play here to avoid that, but now it's going to be a very distant call, like it's um, white has to fill at A, B, and C. I, I right. put a lot of marks on the board here. White has to fill at A, B, and C while fighting this call. It's a three-step approach move call. This does not look good for white. Yeah, so after playing the Hane, when black answers at E, uh, this variation is is not really working for white. It's a, it's a very distant call. There actually is a more direct call at this point. Uh, let's go into that one. Um, if white plays here, uh, this can be a one-step call, but it's a very bad call for white anyway. First of all, because uh, we can see the, the eyes of this white group on the lower side disappearing. So the, for the time being, there's, we're fighting this call on the, on the lower side at A, um, but even if white connects at A, there's this call where black throws and it's B. Um, so it's not a direct call, it's a, it's a one step call. And as black plays these call threats at B and E, um, white's whole side group is gonna die. So finally after black wins the call, um, black will play at F and kill the whole white side group after that. <laughs> so there's, it's just too much uh, for white to lose in this call. So going back to this point, um, Playing the Hane is something I really wanted to do, but it's just not working uh, mm. when black plays plays this way. This, this way, much, it's not working. In the in the game, how much time? Uh, well, first of all, how many? How much time is there? Are, are uh, it's in, a three in the, hour a piece game, so both of us had three hours of thinking time. Um, I think that uh, I was using a lot of time in the fight here on the lower side that okay. was just ended. And then I used a lot of time on this one move. That's what I was um, thinking. But I, but I had the feeling um, that I was winning. And I, I'm still thinking that that feeling was valid, but it depends on my using the Ajni on the right side correctly. Mm -hmm. And so actually, I think I should have used a bit more time and thought about this move, which is actually a very simple move. Like it's, yeah. um, uh, if this move had worked, it would have been really neat and it would have been exciting. And this is what I sort of wanted to happen. And so usually I would just play this move anyway, even though it's not working, uh, because I wouldn't have thought out all of the variations as well as I needed to. Okay. So I'm thinking it was maybe a bit of progress, the fact that I um, realized that this is not gonna work and discarded this variation it was okay. a good thing. Uh, but I didn't go on to find this move, which is, again, it's threatening to uh, play the Hane here next. Now this is going to work. Like if uh, if black covers here, we have this uh, this one step call. So this is bad for black. It's just too much for black. It's a it's an easy call for white. To yeah, play. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so uh, black has if black uh, let's see um, plays here. Uh, locally, this is a reasonable move because the black stones on the side have four liberties. Uh, so for the time being, black's winning. But now when white does this, we have, we're get, getting back into the same variation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, now oh, wait. things have the changed. Position has changed. Now black's in trouble on the side. Yeah. This is going to be a call. Like um, this is going to be a, a one-step call maybe, uh, but it's going to be trouble for black. Let's just add a few moves to the variation. This looks uh, a little easier to read. Uh, and this is going to be a one-step call. Right, 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 right. Uh, but again. Losing this call would lose the whole lower left area. Like there's no place on the board that right. can trade. That. So you just get whatever you want, basically. Yeah. Even though it's a one-step call that uh, favors black, I, I'm going to end up playing two moves in a row. Um, so this is okay. bad for black. Um, and again, if black plays this way, then locally it's already trouble for black. Right. Right. Um, so that's bad. And so we go back 
this is already bad for black. Uh, so there's this move that was a one-step call, and there's this move which is going to be a direct call. So that's bad for black too. Mm. So um, the result that's, is that black has to answer this move directly. Um, black has to answer this move in the corner. So that's 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 my verdict. And that's a plus for white. Black cannot play here, black has to play oh, here. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I was trying to uh, play the Hane and getting a bit more, but just playing the connection here, or actually since it's, I've just shown that the connection is forcing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, the next thing I would think about is maybe white doesn't even have to play that yet, or could play something and leave the left corner, this forcing move for later. But just really? to keep things simple, I'll oh. say that white plays. White, black's gonna answer in the corner, Right, right, right. Um, and now what does white do on the right side? Um, I, uh, the first move that comes to mind is this one. This is the one I looked into. Um, there's uh, the black stones on the outside, these four stones. Why don't I mark them up? Um, these four stones have a kind of a weak shape, uh, a Damizmari shape. So black has to be sort of careful in this file. Um, so just to go into a few variations, there's uh, maybe this move, this move, this move, and this move that I thought about. If black plays here, um, white can switch to the corner like this. This is good enough for white. Mm -hmm. um, all of these variations are going to be better than the actual game. Uh, when white plays there, if black plays here, um, white can pull back and play the honey. And we can see this, this exchange that white got, this extra move white got on the right side is starting to um, come into play here because black has to close off the right side and white's uh, scooping out the corner after all. And so, let's see, there's this move then. Um, in this case, white's gonna be moving out into the center. And this is where the push, pushing through at A is gonna be an issue for black. Like, the, black has bad shape there, and there's the cut at B, and so white has a lot of potential to get good shape on the upper side. I'm just gonna leave it there, but this is gonna be better than the actual game. So much Aji. Yeah. And then there's this move again. White's going to play the honey here. Black's probably going to curl around once. Um, again, white's going to get the corner territory. Um, so whatever happens, uh, um, just going back to the connection here, um, the connection here. If white plays this connection, black's going to be forced to play a move in the corner, and white can, can get something extra um, on the right side. And I think this this would validate my feeling that I had a lead, mm -hmm. uh, but I had to do this. I had to do something like this to, to get something out of the Aji that I have on the right side. So what happened in the actual game was I just simply made a life. I, I had this vague feeling that I was leading in the game. And it made me, a, I think it made me a bit slack. Mm. Um, and so I'm just playing a very mundane variation. And we can see from this move, um, this is a move that black would not usually play because it strengthens white on the upper side. So we can see that black is aware of the fact that uh, black has, still has some bad Aji on the right side. So black's playing this move. It's a kind of a defensive move that black is playing. So we can see that Matsumoto actually has a better grasp of the position on the right side here than I did at the time. Interesting. And black slides into the... Um, this is the in the remain. This is the remaining big point on the board. It's, it's a, a, an open area. At this point in the game, um, I haven't actually lost the game yet. Um, it's just the fact that I'm still sort of deluded about the overall position. I still think I have a lead, so I'm still in a kind of a slack mood. Um, at this point, I think if I played here, uh, this would have still been good for White. Black is sort of forced to play the attachment. And white pulls back and plays the Kosumi. This is actually a variation of this Joseki, which is pretty unusual. Um, like usually you would expect white to uh, be extending after black plays here. Mm -hmm. um, but this is a, this is something I learned from Gosegan actually. It's, it's, he, he likes mm. this variation more. And it turns out black is uh, has done a lot of curling on the on the left side there. And again, I have to I can still make something out of the Aji on the right side with this push through and cut here. I was um, just looking at that, wondering if you can get away with anything there. So that actually works? 
Well, it still has that forcing move on the third line, the connection on the third line. Ah, it hasn't gone so, away. Yeah, How cool. It hasn't gone away yet. So Black still has to play from inside. And um, and so if I play at A and then push through at B, um, making full use of the right side, this is still, it's a pretty close game now. But I think it still favors White just a little bit because Black has to deal with that position on the upper side there because all of those black zones are a bit weak. Mm, so black mm. has to deal with that somehow. And um, white does have a slight advantage in territory still. So it would maybe be a close game. Um, I have to I have to worry about my center group, of course. So it's, it's not clear cut at this point. So going back to the game, um, I'm still playing sort of, I'm playing in the safe mode here. Um, so it's, it's just, my um, positional judgment was incorrect. Again, with this move, this was, um, I'd almost call this the losing move, but actually it became, at one point it was a half point difference. Wow. So it's, it's sort of hard for me to call this the losing move, but again, this is a, a point where I should have pushed through and cut here. And again, I'm, I'm showing this variation where black gets into trouble on right, the side. Right, right, right. Um, and we've been through that already. So yep, people yep, yep. who really need to see it again can go look at the uh, SCF file. Uh, black has to play from inside. And again, this exchange is putting some pressure on black in the center. And white still has a chance in this period. Um, I, it, it goes in stages. Like I'm, I'm feeling gradually feeling less confident about the position as I look at it now. But um, it's, still a, it's still a difficult game for black to, to win. So it's interesting. So it sounds like the uh, just the assessment of feeling that you were ahead was just a, a bit off, and that and that kind of drove. Yeah, um, and led you to know, if I wanted these... to blame it on AlphaGo, I could say it's I... all these seven and a half point games that I'm I'm studying. I was just I, thinking I, that you have to think that I, I only have six and a half points here. Let's <laughs> um, blame but, you it know on when you when you think you're ahead, you try to simplify the game. Right. And so in this case. Um, it's having a bad effect and that I'm losing the Aussie that I should be uh, making use of. It's the AlphaGo, AlphaGo. Well, I guess AlphaGo sometimes does that. You pointed that out, that will sort of give away some points and then, but this is earlier and AlphaGo usually will still be playing, you know, full. Well, AlphaGo is doing that a lot in the Master Series. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Partly because it was so far ahead. Right. Like it was winning after 30, game, 30 moves in the game. Right. And uh, I don't have any of the value network uh, data, but like um, they're very early in the game, it was probably saying stuff like it was winning 70 percent of the time. Right. Or something like that. Um, and so it had reason to simplify the game. And at this stage of the game where there's a lot of open space, AlphaGo was actually very good at doing that. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the app master version, that's that's right. a different different entity than the AlphaGo that plays the 50 game self-plate. So it's a different uh, right. time, a different version. Um, master was very, the master version was very good at um, simplifying the game at this point, but um, in the final 50 moves of the game, it would still be giving away points. Mm -hmm. And that was something that bothered me uh, just because that was a point of the game where it was obvious that it was losing points and it was something that I could point to. Mm -hmm. And I could say this move lost two points, this move lost a point, and there's no reason for it to be doing that. Um, and that's something that's not happening in the in the 50 game series because the end game is really complicated. And actually, um, I think AlphaGo, the new version of AlphaGo has changed um, in that it, it really likes to mix things up, it likes to complicate the position so much that um, you, I get the feeling that maybe winning the game is become a secondary, well, the deep mind folks would really be upset with, with I was going to say, I'm, I'm pretty that sure feeling. that's not the case, but I know it's what you not mean. The case. They, they've given it the task to win the game, but yeah, it really likes to mix things up anyway. Um, so to get back to my game, at this point, um, all of my potential on the right side is just about yeah, disappeared. It's, it's all been fixed now. Yeah. And so it's a question of um, my weak center group and um, how much I can get on the upper side is are the two focal points in this game now. So we continue a little bit. I'm making some Aji here on the left side. Um, 
weakening black a bit in the center. Um, so this was an okay trade. At this point, though, I needed to put a stone in in the center. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is actually, as far as territory is concerned, it's a pretty big move because I uh, next I can play here to expand right. my center a little bit. Um, so it's, it, it gives me some territory in the center. It gives me a thick shape. Mm -hmm. And looking at the overall position, the game is close. And I just don't know who's going to win the game. So I, I say that this is um, my last my last chance to maybe have a winning position. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a very close game. I, I played the honey here. Um, playing cutting here is, is a tesuji. Black can um, take sente. Um, plays in a, and then plays here. This is a big move. Ouch. Um, not it. It's big for two reasons. This exchange here that black has just played. Um, it's given black a a potential life in the center. So this has really strengthened Black's lower side group because um, even if I can cut this lower side group off, it already has um, a way to make eyes. Mm. So that's one reason that Black has played here. The other reason is that now White does not have eye shape in the center. Right. And just looking at the overall position, the fact that I've um, made things easy for Black on the right side is really is really hurting me now because all of Black's stones there towards the upper side are fairly strong, um, just because they're solidly connected to the right side of the board. So the fact that I failed <clears throat> to make that exchange to put pressure on Black um, is making a big difference. So I play here, I'm starting to make, and Black gets to play these uh, forcing moves on the upper side. Um, and so it's at this point that I'm starting to realize that I've messed up. Mm -hmm. um, the realization comes now that I see that my center group is not settled. Um, and this cut here is a nice tesuji with which Black is going to force me to take it and then play this forcing move. And after this, Black still has these forcing moves starting with A, Black can at, th at the very least can play a notari on the fourth line, but also sometimes Black will um, be able to make me put an extra stone in in that territory on the upper side. So This is all just costing you points now. It's costing me points and I, I'm coming uh, suddenly coming to the realization that actually this is not very good for white and so you can see how i destroyed my game in stages there but at this point it, it becomes obvious that um the game is turning bad for him and so i um i try to get a bit extra here uh this was actually an overplay um but black messed up too like if black could have just played here and i would be answering somehow and then escaping here um, in this variation, uh, Black has a living shape there on the upper side. So Black's perfectly alive and has trashed White's territory. So this, this would be a win for Black. Black would have a, a fairly comfortable margin in this variation. Um, but Black got a bit fancy here. Um, so we can see that Black is trying to get something extra. Um, maybe he doesn't completely realize that he has a winning position yet. But uh, this was just an oversight in that I found this move, which... Um, it captures the two stones on the left. And at the same time, it, um, it patches up my position on the right too, for the time being. So uh, this move sort of saved the day for me locally there. Um, and Black can play a double Atari. Let's just put that variation in. The double Atari doesn't really accomplish very much because, um, oh, sorry. Uh, it doesn't accomplish much because uh, it's important for white to get the two stones on the left there. So white has a living shape. And actually black's group on the upper side there is in a bit of danger. So this this hasn't really, black might have got a bit of territory, but since it's a dead shape, it's not very good for black. So black uh, switches to the corner. This is this is a move that black cannot afford to give to white. Um, the, the territorial balance is still, it's still um, unsure. So. Black needs to play this 3-3 three, three point to catch up in territory. And so I attack a little bit in the center. Um, and we can see I'm trying to put pressure on Black's center group. Um, but at this point, I cannot play the Hane. Um, let's, let's try... First, let's yeah, go through... I, yeah, I was thinking it would be really cool if you could, if you could get that uh, center group. Yeah, well, let's start with this variation. Um, if white plays this way, it looks like white can kill the center, but uh, mm -hmm. this move takes black. 
Um, and white's center group is not very strong right. either. Like if white plays here and here, it looks like white can kill the black group. But we can see white's sort of falling apart here. So this is going to be um, like black could even just uh, play here and kill the whole thing. Mm. Uh, so white's going to lose this one. And so let's go back to the. Um, so cutting here doesn't work. Um, white would like to be able to play here and then cut. That might make a little difference. Uh, but actually, uh, black can cut here and push through here to capture that. So that's not oh, going to work. Oh, nice. And so, um, so I play here. What I'm trying to do is, if black is greedy and plays this one, then I can play these forcing moves, and right I'm here. omitting yeah. the co-fighting. Co but this is going to change what happens here. Um, like, I would have A, B. Very um, nice. Very nice. There's this problem with the center that black has, too. Um, so this is not going to work for black. So black, uh, black plays away and connects in the center. So I get this move. So I'm catching up a little bit in territory here. Uh, Black takes this big move here, and I live in the, on the side. Um, and we can see there's some a uh, bit of infighting happening here. Black's squeezing my group on the side. And at this point, um, this here was um, was not the best move. Black sort of played on the side here, in which case I calculate that Black's going to win by um, like if we say Black connects and Black. Connects. Black's going to win by about 10 points before Comey. So oh, two and a half, three and a half points, something right, like that. Right, right. Um, but uh, Black, take, this is looks like it's the biggest move, but at this point, the game is actually very That's close. It's huge, actually, yeah. It's a big move because um, after this, White can sort of squeeze the upper left corner, mm -hmm. so Black plays, mm -hmm. plays like this. And now, uh, still, I cannot kill the center, but there's... Uh, there's some fine points there. Like if I try to kill the center with this sequence, um, black has uh, an eye here. Black has one eye in this area. So the question is still, can I uh, get rid of this eye in the center? So um, I might try something like this. But it's again, it's the same story as what I was doing before. It doesn't it just doesn't work uh, because my position is just too weak in the center. Wow, 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 wow. So that's that's a collapse for white. Um, so actually, I think um, since I've been in uh, my final minute for, for a long time in this game, um, I'm doing better than I usually uh, do in reading out all of these variations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and I think that has to do with all the, all the reading that uh, AlphaGo is forcing me to do I in, was, the master, yeah. in the AlphaGo AlphaGo series in which the games get very complicated towards the end. Um, and I think actually that was helping me in this fighting here, um, in which I was avoiding all of these collapsing variations. And I, I was right. actually reading them out instead of just chickening out and stuff. So I was actually doing a lot of reading that, and when I look at it later, it turns out to be pretty good. That's pretty uh, cool though, to, yeah. have that, to have that directive of the fact. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, in this area, um, I'm gonna ignore the details. Um, but I, I'm, I sort of tricked Black a little bit because I'm setting something up here. For one thing, um, when I, this move I've just played is, is threatening Black in the center because it's taking away that eye that Black had. Yeah. So yeah. if Black plays this move, which is huge, I'm going to be able to kill Black in the center. Um, so I'm just throwing that variation. Um, Black only has one eye here. Nice. So that's, that is so cool. And, so all of this stuff that's happening in the center, you can see that white has, um, white, it, originally white seemed to have a bit more territory here. Like at this point, it looked like white was gonna get some territory yeah, in the center. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've sort of sacrificed that part, uh, but I'm gonna, get, uh, I'm gonna get this move in return. And this is uh, where- Oh, nice. Actually black sort of played here. I think black would have won by, I put um, in the SDF file, I have a number. I think it was two and a half points or yeah, yeah. one and a half points or something like that. Um, and this is really a very complicated position here. Again, um, all sorts of stuff can happen. And again, this connection. Amazing, here, that's still there. It's still there. 
Um, partly because Black made this mistake. Like if Black ah, had played here, I see, um, let's I just see. throw a few more moves into that variation. Um, <laughs> it doesn't have anything to do with it. Like White can, um, uh, the connection, um, if White connects, Black can just answer on this side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. Black's going to win the semi. Right. And actually, um, given this move, it's not actually even that hard to read that out. It's losing points, so it's, it's not really very good for White. Right. Um, so in this variation, Black's going to win. Um, actually, Black made a, a slight mistake with this move. Um, and I'm getting a little bit extra. Uh, because if Black answers on this side, now I can make a lot of trouble in the, in the, on the side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, like This is the main variation, I guess, in which White gets to break into the side. This would obviously be a win for White. Oh, man. That, that would have um, been a game for White, plays, wouldn't it? That, yeah, it would be a win for White. If Black yeah, plays yeah. this way. Now, this is more interesting. Um, White is threatening to live on the side. So if Black kills the side, this is going to be another semi Um Oh, and this right is going to be a, a, yeah, 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 a call. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a step call. Right, uh, right, right. But again, a step call is good for white. I'm already gaining points in the center in this series. Wow. So many and then ways. There's this, yeah, there's this move too. I, 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 I really went overboard in the variations this game too. But again, we see white's <laughs> breaking it to the right side. So uh, when white plays uh, when white plays this move, white, black has to answer on this side. And so now I can play this move. So I finally got this move in after all. Yay! Um, but it was too late. Yeah, but you got um, moral, moral victory. And so Black plays the co once. Um, if I had uh, a good number of co threats, actually I could have won this game at this point. But I just don't have enough co threats to make it work. So I, I play this move. Um, again, Black, uh, Black's correct move is to play here. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this ends up with white squeezing black. And I would like to, um, I, in the variations where I was showing this kind of thing, you might remember that I was showing black playing here. I was showing, let's, let's mm -hmm. do it in a variation. I was showing black playing here and uh, white forcing black to capture these stones, which would be a lot of stones that black is putting inside black's territory. Um, and actually, this would be a win for white. I would be able to play here. I was say, that should be enough for you. That would be enough. Yeah, yeah. Um, the actual truth is that uh, when black takes the co here, I just don't have enough co threats. Wow. Uh, to force that, because it is a step co. It's a one step, and uh, it's a one step co. So I need to win the co twice, and I just don't have enough co threats to make that happen. Like um, black has some co threats in the upper left. Uh, area that living white group in the upper left and stuff like mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. I just don't have enough co threats. And so I play the biggest move. At this point, actually, I'm losing by one half a point. Oh my god. And yeah, I sort of realized it. So I, I this was the losing move. I mean, it was the move that lost another point. It, I should have played this. Um, but I was realizing that I, I at that point, I, I was realizing that I was behind. So um, you could say I sort of lost interest, um, but wow. I sort of played this way. Um, and this, I, I going into this variation, um, just the ideal variation for white uh, ends up with black winning by one half a point. So the best I can do with this is to get a half point loss. In the actual yeah. game, um, black finally plays this move, which is a um, which would have been a sente move for white. So um, this is a big move. It uh, increases black's territory by almost two points. And it, it's, it's, um, it's strictly speaking, it's a, it would have been a one and a half point sente move for white. So it's a one and a half point move, so it's less than two points, um, but it would have been sente for white. So it, it was bigger than the move that I played. Like this move was more like, um, it was about two points. Mm. And so, that, and so that's that's how the game turned out. So I, I lost a point in that final exchange there, and it ended with Black winning by one and a half points. So it's interesting because you know it sounds to me like your assessment, you know, uh, earlier of being ahead. I mean, if you you, I mean, it's that really it's a half point game. Uh, 
So you were ahead. Um, I was ahead. Um, in the final stages of the game, uh, there were some mistakes that Black made. Like, um, and there were some moves that were not perfect. Um, but it was it was pretty close throughout. Like, um, there was a point uh, where I was saying, actually, in this video, where I was saying that Black is going to win by ten points before Komi. So yeah. that was about as far as Black got ahead in the game. Wow. That's um, interesting. So, it and yeah. I, so in that way, although I made this uh, mistake in, in a crucial part of the game, I think on the whole, um, I was playing a bit more steadily than I usually do. Um, and, your, and, and your reading, which obviously has is, is, is long been you know, incredibly strong, I, I, but you know, it, it does feel to me like it's even sharper and deeper. Um, and it, it may be just because we're doing these videos as well, but I mean, I, that, that's what it feels like to me, just as an observation. Well, I'd, I'd say that um, I always had some ability in reading, mm -hmm. um, but um, you could say there was a kind of a lack of stamina in it. So there, there were go. points in the game where my reading is not, uh, it, it's, um, it loses its quality. Mm -hmm. in some parts of the game. So it's, it's not as stable as it could be. Um, whereas I think doing these videos about AlphaGo's 50 games, the fact that I'm sort of forced to read out variation after variation after variation, and it goes on to the end of the game, that has um, given me a habit of uh, thinking about, uh, of reading more deeply um, and more quickly as, as I play um, into the end game also. Well, and just one final question. Um, what I, another part of that related to that is that it feels, and again, just you know, in talking with you during the commentaries, when you're doing having to do that reading, that in-depth reading, where you there's no personality involved. It's not somebody who you know. You know, it's almost like a black box problem, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It seems like it's really forcing you into. Um, a different kind of analysis, or maybe a purer analysis. Am I? Is, is that sound at all make sense? Sort of makes sense. It's you're, it's, it's very deep what you're trying to say, um, but yes, it does it does force me. Um, what AlphaGo is doing sometimes, like it plays a lot of forcing moves that are hard to understand. Right. But in some cases, then there is a good reason for the move, and I have to do a lot of digging to figure it out. Exactly. And so it's it's given me the habit of. Um, really um, analyzing the variations uh, very deeply to try to find any hidden meaning that there might be. So it's, it's making me more, um, more um, complete in my thinking that, in that way, I think. Right. Right. Well, it's, it's, it's a, a real joy, I have to say. I've been really enjoying the AlphaGo, AlphaGo games, but, you know, seeing, you know, just two humans duking it out at this level, mm -hmm. uh, both in terms of, you know, both of you guys, you know, both players doing really strong reading, but then, you know, uh, you can away make some points too, yeah. and you guys yeah. make mistakes. So I mean, as, yeah. as a fellow human, I appreciate it. So. Yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you once again, Michael. Wonderful game, great commentary, and uh, thanks everybody for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.